Hello Vinyl community, another day, another video. So just a little funny story in the, at the beginning. So uh, I do live uh, on the countryside, basically uh, far away from any kind of uh, urban infrastructure. And so we do have one uh, flea market of sorts here, not far away. It's rather a, uh, well it's like a thrift store, but open air. And um, they come together like every two months, I think. So uh, there's mostly books and all kind of stuff and rubbish. And um, and uh, there are like two or three guys that do sell records, vinyl records. And they uh, mostly have it from sort of abandoned households or I don't know, when somebody dies probably. And um, so I've been buying records there for a couple of years. And uh, well, sometimes you get lucky. It's not only it's not, most of it is rubbish, but you get lucky, and sometimes you can pick something interesting and get it like for three, four, five euro. So like, last year when I came there again and just went to the regular guys, something had changed in the atmosphere <laughs> in the air because suddenly it was like uh, yeah well you know this one that's like 25 euro and this one oh this isn't this is a very valuable one this is 30 euro and um, they kind of treat you like you know shit about that and which is quite hilarious because um, those are those are guys that have no real relation to records it's just amongst the other things that they get out of households and uh, they just they heard through the grapevine through the bush drums, they heard that, oh, people are buying records again. So, um, of course, I got in a bit of an argument there with this guy. And I was just saying, look, yeah, there are records that can be sold for 30 euros. This is not unusual. But if you want to be the guy that sells records like that, you kind of have to get into the whole grading system. And um, I mean, you have just cardboard boxes here and th the stuff is lying inside. And I, mean, I don't, there are no, there are no s uh, protection sleeves, uh, nothing. I mean, you, you, there's just no, there's just no, no, um, it's not justified <laughs> to demand 25 euro for this record like right now, especially because, um, I don't know how, how good the vinyl quality is and so on. It was not a, pleasant situation but I went to the other guy and it was basically the same it was like yeah no 18 dollars and give me or 18 euro or yeah this one this one is very important I can only give you that for 30 euro and stuff like that I was really uh, thinking yeah you can kiss my ass so I just never went there again for a whole year I kind of left them alone with their records and uh, <laughs> no, two weeks ago I went back and I have seen from the distance, I already saw these crates with the record, so I thought, ah, let's test it out, let's just have a look, I'm just curious. So I kind of picked one or two or three records, I don't know how much for them. Yeah, yeah, this one maybe, it's five euro, okay. Well, if this one, yeah, four euro, okay, this one, seven, no. So, all right, good price, thank you very much, see you next time. So, lesson learned, I think, but I think it, it quite uh, resonates with uh, experiences that people are making all around the world right now. What I hear a lot is uh, people complaining about thrift stores and flea markets where just suddenly um, the stuff that people wanted like one dollar a year ago suddenly is supposedly worth fifteen dollars. So this is not an unusual experience. And it's a bit shabby, all in all, because none of these records have been stored properly over the years. So when I buy a record for two dollars or three dollars, it's it's a risk you take because once you come home, you can also find out that it was not even worth that. Yeah, so that's the little story. And um, but um, I also went to another stand that just had a box full of uh, seven inches. I usually don't buy that much 7 inches unless it's something very charming, which I did here. I bought three 7 inches, which are quite cute. Um, so back in the day, there was this tradition to make these little EPs, which were like soundtracks to movies. So if a movie had music in it, um, oftentimes there wasn't a whole uh, sort of soundtrack album as we do it today, but uh, it was uh, just a 7 inch with a three or four tracks on it. 
So this one is uh, one by Michel Legrand, which is of course a famous uh, French slash American composer. Um, and this is a bit of a mixture from some of his movies, like his famous movie, Le, uh, his, from his famous soundtrack to the movie Le Rififi, or the Italian movie La Strada. So um, there are four tracks on this. Um, this one is uh, from a movie I have known for quite a while, because I'm such a Bossa Nova fan. It's from the movie Orfeo Negro, and uh, it includes, um, oh, it's basically the A-side is covered by two tracks by, of course, Antonio Carlos Chobim, and the B-side has two tracks by Luis Bonfa, who both more or less equally contributed to the um, Orfeo Negro soundtrack which is a wonderful Brazilian film from the early 60s. I think up until now the only Brazilian film ever receiving an Academy Award. And uh, finally, this one, The Man with the Golden Arm, Elmer Bernstein soundtrack. Again, like three or four tracks on it, sort of the main cues. So this came out on Brunswick and um, it's kind of cool. So sometimes when there is a certain charm behind it, I kind of like buying seven inches. So that's it for the moment and see you next time. Bye bye.